So this is after you've done the client intake. This is also after you've helped them situate themselves on the chair. If you want to familiarize yourself or refresh that, we will have the links uh, to Brooks videos attached with this. So from here, you have someone that's complained about carpal tunnel syndrome, or maybe the person that sent them here, if they're working for a bigger group, wants them to get treated for it or prepped for it. As we look at this type of situation, what we want to do is take a strategic approach first. If they want direct work on or for carpal tunnel, we're going to do it a little bit differently than someone that just comes around and says, hey, you know, I work at a desk all day. I think I might be getting some pain in my wrists. You know, it's a very direct message versus an indirect message. So we're going to start with the direct message treatment first. So as you're working for someone that has directly complained about carpal tunnel syndrome, one of the worst things you can do is like wait for the last five minutes of the session to start to approach it. And so as you do the therapy, you do want to warm up closer to the spine and then work towards the hands, but you want to make sure that the directional flow of the therapy is always there. That way it's not them just kind of waiting for you to finish everything here, everything there. You want to kind of build momentum to that area without actually building momentum. So one thing you can do, you can start out just up in here and do a little push-pull movement to warm them up. Once again, this is optimal for body mechanics too. And if you have any concerns or questions about this, just send us a message and we can go over some of the body mechanics for this with the push and pull. And you can do the same thing as we go up into the neck, kind of do a little push and pull. If you want to integrate any myofascial release techniques that you have, just do whatever you want to. Right now we're looking more at the strategic approach and more the directional flow. If you want to add your own flavor into this, by all means, go ahead. If you do have time and they have mentioned any numbness going around the radial or the ulnar line into their hand, uh, rotator cuff work is fantastic to integrate into this. But from here, after we've warmed up the area, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the spiral mechanics of the upper arm. So we're looking at subscapularis attachment, a little bit of triceps, a little bit of the posterior deltoid. And so what you can do is you can let the arm hang down a little bit and then just kind of come up through here and I use a lateral drag right through here and I just kind of cup around the ribs and I just bring it up over and down and then when I get to right about here I decrease my pressure and my speed to make sure there's little or no chafing and I just try to see if there's any connections in there that might need to be softened up and you can bring that all the way down to the elbow And as we look at the opposite side, and I'll do a little bit of rotation here, to counteract this, we're looking at the coracobrachialis, we're looking at the biceps, and then that's the majority of that there. So what you can do is you can kind of come in here, once again, if your patient or your client does have breasts, be very careful of your hand positioning here. Always try to connect and then pull away from that area. And so we're just going to kind of come right in here, you might not be able to see this well, but I'm just doing the same type of lateral glide right through here. Kind of hooking right like that with my fingers and seeing if there's any connections there that shouldn't be. Okay, And then to combine these two together, same grip and do a little bit of traction at the same time. Another push and pull, you can project a little bit of pressure up through the thumbs as you connect and pull down. Right through there. Once again, when it comes to carpal tunnel syndrome, there is a lot of internal rotation of the arm and hand. And as you look at this, you make contact oftentimes with the keyboard through the hand here but then that goes all the way up into the thoracic spine. And so it'll affect everything from here to there after a while. If they're complaining about this pain, it's probably already gotten that bad. And so it never hurts to add this into the game. So we've gone all the way down to the elbow now. 
One thing you can do before this, if you so choose, limp arm, kind of cradle it right like that, pressure, straight hand, straight wrist, opposite paraspinals in the thoracic region, so right through here and just put a little pressure in and then bring the shoulder up and around. So you're working the dynamic interaction between the pecs and the opposite thoracic paraspinals. This has a lot to do with the dynamic function of external rotation in the arm. Very rarely do you go into external rotation with a twist, but it is vitally important when it comes to preventing thoracic outlet pain. The only group of people that I've noticed that is are really skilled at that type of movement are trick shooters with the classic bow and arrow off of horseback, where they are shooting behind them at a target. Very rarely do we use that movement, and if you think about being at a desk, how often do you look behind you. So just by opening up the channels to be able to facilitate that movement, you can help take care of carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, we're gonna go back into here. So we've gotten to the forearm and that same spiral rotation from excessive internal rotation of the arm exists in a pattern through here. And so what we're gonna do we're gonna start with a neutral wrist placement right through here, so straight wrist to a degree. I like to do a little cupping like this with my hand and very lightly just bring the thumb right like that, okay? If they're sensitive in their hands, you know, listen for the response with your touch on whether that feels safe for them. If you've already built a rapport, it's probably not an issue. If this is like the third or fourth session they're coming to you for, that's perfectly fine. But what we wanna do is just neutral placement here. And this is a lotion or a lubricant free technique, okay? So you have to do your listening hands, your quality touch, where you create a nice hook here. Start right in between the wrist retinaculums. And what we're gonna do is I'm just going to internally rotate and then apply pressure. Try to do it simultaneously. I kind of staggered that a little bit. Let it go back to neutral. Right through there. And then check for pressure. How's that feeling? Feels good. Okay. In later videos, we'll go over how to optimize pressure or power distribution with minimal exertion on you. Um, this is one of the ways to do it. And now we're just gonna do the external rotation. Okay. And in this position also, it's very easy to work on the flexors, okay? And we'll do the same thing. I might cup right through here, kind of open palm, open up the tunnel, okay? And as I rotate externally, you go right through there. And right through there. Does that one feel okay? Mm-hmm, feels good. Always be mindful of the quality of texture on your hands. If you do a lot of heavy weightlifting and you have a lot of grit going on there and you have really kind of rough hands, your ability to do slower movements without any type of lubrication, it goes down. And so if you need to take a pumice stone or what have you to kind of grind that off, that's what I do. I do a lot of building and weightlifting and I just grind it down every day. So, and then I will personally like, just treat my hands once a week if I can to something that'll help the quality of the skin. So if you find that you do have a hard time with rough skin or anything like that, check your nutrition 
see if there's something, especially like your essential fatty acids that you might be missing. I know A3 can also be a contributing, or sorry, A3, vitamin A can be a contributing factor in that too, and most people are deficient in that. So once again, that is a suggestion that you might just want to look into if you have that problem. Okay, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the retinaculums. So right through here, there's a ton of connective tissue that wraps around this area and encapsulates this. And so we're going to have her let her arm just be dead weight if she can. And once again, if this position through here, as we work on this, hikes up the shoulder, you know, and they're all getting all kind of quasi-moto on you, uh, then just reposition or bring the hand or arm down to the side, okay? But what we're gonna do is what I call the dry grip, which is German for three, and they count three like this. Um, we take our hands like this, bring them right around here, and we do a push-pull movement with this. So I'm going to kind of glide up this side while pulling down on the other one. So just like this. Is that okay on you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just looking at, you want to feel some heat, but not necessarily chafing. So if you have someone with excessively hairy arms, um, go slower. All right. And then after that, what we do, what's called the dew claw grip, if people are familiar with what a dew claw is, but you're going to take almost the same position and you're going to bring your thumb back like this and make a little claw right like that. And so what you do with this is you take a look at the carpal tunnel here and you're going to clasp with the dew claw, right like this, and then your middle fingers, I'm gonna take your arm if that's okay, will be going right through here, and you're gonna do the same push-pull movement, but you're gonna work on flexion and extension. So I'm gonna kinda pull down with my middle fingers while I push up with my thumbs. And you can bring that all the way up the hand for as far as your range of motion can allow. And back and forth. And you can go back into the retinaculum. And from here, whatever you do with the digits, it's up to you, okay? One final thing that you might want to consider doing is looking at the muscles that go in between here, the interossi. And one of my favorite things to do right here, let the fingers kind of roll along the edge of the chair, and I'm just going to kind of run my fingers right through there. You can take both at the same time. Right through there. Does that feel okay? Yeah, it feels great. So these are super neglected. Once again, there's a lot of vascular stuff going through there. So you don't want to use too much pressure, but just kind of a parallel plane with your hand and then running your fingers right through there can feel phenomenal. And so I'm going to kind of do this a quick and pace all at once so you can see it kind of combined together, integrated.
transition over to the other side. As you notice, I had some flair and some additional connecting movements in there. And most of this stuff is just general structural outline. That's the direct approach. If you have 10 to maybe 13 minutes to really get in there and treat it directly, that's what we do, or that's an optimal way to do it. If you want to kind of take and move things around, this isn't written in stone.